Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked Fly Fly Fishing. And today we're going to tie a simplified sand eel. It's a striped bass pattern, and I've caught a ton of fish on this fly. I mean, I've caught some really big fish. I mean, like some seriously big fish. And I've also caught hundreds and hundreds of squiddy bass on it. I started tying it a few years ago, and uh, it's, now it's one of the uh, go-to flies for me in Cape Cod. In fact, I think I'll probably fish this fly more than any other one. Now I fish it in three sizes. I have uh, medium on the vise right now, and we'll be tying a small version. So let's take a look at the materials and then get into the tying. Okay, the hook is a saltwater stainless steel hook. Uh, you can use the tin variety as well. Uh, it's a short shank, um, double extra strong. Um, anywhere from a size 2 all the way up to a one aught or 2 aught you can use. The thread we're going to use today is Danville's monofilament. We're going to be using fine. The belly section of the fly is white bucktail. The back of the uh, wing is going to be olive bucktail. The topping is going to be peacock curl. And then we're using this lateral scale flash for uh, our flash. And finally, we've got some Mylar stick-on eyes. Now, these Mylar eyes can be a bit tough to find. I appreciate that, but um, they, they work extremely well, and I prefer to use them. You can get the tabbed variety as well. The trouble is with the way I tie this fly, the tabbed variety, the tab will show up. So, you know, try and find these if you can. So, let's get started. I'll put on a base of thread first. Just thought I'd better put on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Put some pressure on when you're winding this because you're going to find that this fly might want to slip around the hook after it's been fished a while and you banged it on the surf and the beach behind you and stuff like that. So it doesn't hurt to really tighten that down. So we're just going to next take our bucktail and just take a very, very thin clump out of the tip. We use the tip because it's that hair is solid, and I'm going to stroke the small stuff out of it. We don't want any of the small ones. Okay, I'm just going to use this point of my vise here as my measuring point. That's where my longest hair will go. So I'll trim that bit off. When I work with bucktail, I always trim and then tie on. I don't like uh, trying to tr tie the bucktail on then trim it. It it gets messy and awkward. Now use pinch loops here. Keep the bucktail on top. I'll just stop there for a moment. We're going to put in our flash. Usually three or four strands will do the job. Just bring that up behind and up over the top about halfway. Just sort of wrap it in the middle. Fold that over. Put a few locking wraps in there. Now these are too long. One of the last steps we'll do is we'll trim off when we're done, is we'll just trim off some of that extra. Now we'll put in our olive. Again, a very thin little clump. Barely nothing at all. Get rid of the short stuff. Again, measure. Again, using pinch loops because we want to keep this on top. Now at this stage of the game, I like to turn it around and make sure it looks more or less equal on both sides. And then we begin to wrap this back. And you notice how I'm holding it up in to uh, help keep the bucktail on top. And don't go past the start of the bend or else your fly will um, curve round and you'll end up with a fly that ends up curving like this. Now we put our peacock topping on. If you find that your peacock is rather fine, use three. There's another reason for using three as well. Is the, the, the topping often gets broken after you've got a few fish. So if you've got three, you've got a better chance of having one survive. Okay, that's the length. I'm just going to bring this to about here. Again, pinch loops. Keep everything on top.
Now what we're going to do right at the very back, I'm just going to put in some very soft wraps. And these soft wraps keep everything clumped together. Now you don't want to pull a tight wrap at the back because everything will just splay out. Keep everything on top. Now you can see that that um, peacock curl is a little ragged. So you can put a few extra wraps in to try and get that to sit down a little bit. Okay, now we're ready for our Mylar eyes. I use my bodkin to pick them off. These eyes are on the large size for this fly, but that's fine. Uh, I like nice big eyes. It uh, helps as an attractor. Uh, striped bass hit the head of a fly. So if you've got nice big eyes on the head of the fly, it helps them with their aim. They don't miss the hook that way. Just reposition that with your fingers if it's a little off. Now you'll see why we use the clear monofilament. I'm just going to use the clear to hold those eyes in place. There we go. I'll just put a wind at the back and then I'll bring that forward. Now we're going to whip finish. Now the next step is just to trim off that uh, extra, oh, I've got one that's bent a little bit, let's take that bend out of it. Now, I want to talk about the head cement on this one. I'm going to use UV uh, and then I'm going to follow it up with a, uh, a top coat that women use for their fingernails. And this is designed to go over UV, so it uh, helps me to seal up the UV. And when you put the UV on, go with a very, very, very thin coat. So this stuff is very watery, it's a thin stuff, and I spend some time getting most of it off the brush. I don't want a great thick glob on the head of the fly. This is where the rotary vise comes in handy. Now as we get that glue to work in the um, between the wraps of the thread, you'll see the colors will start to show up underneath, which is another reason why we use clear monofilament. Now I'll just turn that around a little bit, and what we're going to do is just turn it around so it um, is even on all sides. So if this was summer, I'd put this fly outside in the sun and it would bake and that UV glue would be great. But if I was to use it like this now, it would stay tacky and if I fish it, it would go milky. So I'm going to put on this top coat and uh, it will dry nice and hard and clear. And what I'm going to have uh, is a nice, clear, hard finish. It won't discolor and it won't be tacky. The only thing is this stuff stinks. So don't put it in your fly box right away. Leave it out. Let it... Uh, cure properly and then it uh, the smell will leave and you'll be able to fish it. Okay there's our fly. We've uh, we can probably do a little bit better job with the glue at the back. Yeah, I'll stroke that down that one. You, you often get the um, peacock curl sticking up but don't worry about it. It it'll uh, it'll fish just fine and the fish won't care. So there's our simplified sand eel. It looks like nothing. It's easy to tie. You can tie dozens in a, in a very short period of time, but you'll get a ton of fish on them. From anything from a 12-inch a schoolie up to my biggest fish, which is a 38-inch striped bass. It came on one of these, one of these little guys. So you'd be surprised how a big fish will take a little, little, little fly. Anyway, try it. If you're going to go fish striped bass, it's going to work fantastic. It'll probably work for smallmouth and largemouth as well. I mean, you can give it a try. It might work for trout. But I'll tell you, it's great as a striped bass pattern. There you go. Simplified sand eel. Good luck. Enjoy the fishing. Cheers.